And so now I am joined by Meredith. Welcome to Not Fest Daily. How are you doing over there? I'm doing well. How about you? I have no complaints. Really excited to be speaking with you today. So thank you for taking the time. Thanks for having me. Of course, there's so much to dive into when it comes to victims right now. Of course, your new album, Numb the Ache, is officially released to the world. So what's kind of running through your mind now that you can let the release sink in a little bit and you've seen the awesome response from all the fans out there? Uh, I'm just kind of eager to hit the road again on mm -hmm. this material and just finally being able to have people listen to this album, although we've been done with it for like a few years. Like we've been done with this since 2019. And wow. so like the fact that it finally dropped um, like uh, over two weeks ago at this point um, has just been an incredible experience and a lot less stressful, you know, gearing up to a release, I always feel that an anticipation and I'm like shaking <laughs> with nerves, so. <laughs> But it must feel pretty amazing that the response to it has been great from fans, critics, however you want to look at it. I mean, uh, something that I really enjoyed reading from you is you shared such an emotional message about the record and just how you've been doing this for nearly 10 years. And a lot of times you wanted to quit, but having the whole bad luck crew means everything to you and you definitely stuck around. So I'd love to know more about how that crew and that name kind of came about, especially knowing how much their support means to this band. So back, oh, we were sitting at beat ups. I want to say in like 2012, 2013 or something of that kind. And I wanted something that just like stuck. You know how bands have like emblems and yeah. they just have something that <clears throat> is, is the niche to the band. Well, I found there's, we have a kanji symbol that it actually means bad luck in Japanese. And so I was like, why not like bad luck crew? Like a mirror has like a mirror coal or like, you know, a lot of other bands have some kind of like just what they call their supporters. Mm -hmm. And so Bad Luck Crew kind of came about and it, it worked well because in life uh, we've not all had the best luck, especially me. So it kind of just fits uh, being like being a victim. You have bad luck. I mean, it, it all kind of just blends in together. I feel like it just worked out. <clears throat> so. And you you could have had something that would have been very straightforward or some people could have viewed as even cheesy of just simply calling like the fans victims themselves. So the yeah. fact that it's something that's totally different, uh, but really does go hand in hand with it. it. It's really fitting. It's kind of perfect. Thank you. Thank you. No, I, it worked out great. And obviously that was what, seven years ago or something or eight years ago when, when we came up with that. So it's kind of nice that it just stuck around for as long and caught on. So right. Now, you had mentioned how much you're itching to get back out there and play. And about a week or so ago, you actually had your first show back for the album release party, which was apparently insane. Like the photographs looked dope. So how incredible did it feel to kind of be back out there doing your thing? It, w it was awesome. That was our biggest hometown show like that we've headlined ever. And it was over 500 people. And we weren't like yeah. expecting that at all. And the only, my, you know, there was a concern, obviously, still with covid being very like prevalent to the world right now. It was very like scary to put people in kind of that position of risk, but uh, we kind of told people like come at your own risk and stuff like that. And uh, a lot of us are like vaccinated. So we're, we're trying our best to just get back to that normalization like the rest of the world is. But the show itself was just incredible. We played songs that we haven't played ever and then we also played an hour set. Normally we play like 30 minutes, but we played an hour set and uh, we got an encore at the end of it. And that was just something very unexpected. So I just feel very like blessed to be in the position that I am now and like slowly getting back into it. Every photo I saw, people were just so into it. Like they were just eating it up. So that's <laughs> wonderful oh, that it was. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was awesome. The, the crowd that's reaction sweet. and the energy was just, unreal i think sometimes when i play though like because i'm in the back i don't like see it all happen like it's almost just like a blur so like when i watch videos back and stuff like that that's like when i'm like oh wow <laughs> that actually happened like I, I don't realize half the things that happen when i'm playing right i mean now that you've been back up there actually performing what do you think is the thing that you miss the most about uh either touring or actually playing was it the actual jamming the crowd the energy I think, I think it's just being able to release emotion and like throughout like the past year, 
just not having that that outlet and and able to like release everything that you're feeling is just a huge thing that I missed. And that's like why what like drives me to keep playing music is just like being able to lay it all out there um, for everyone to connect to and just be yourself completely without judgment, I guess. When it comes to the fans, uh, something I noticed recently, especially as of late, there are a lot of victims' tattoos floating around in the world. So do you kind of find it's crazy that people are so committed to what you've created? I mean, permanently committed in a sense? Or have you kind of seen so many now, it almost does feel, feel a little bit normal? I don't think it ever is going to feel normal. I get like excited anytime anyone shows me anything. Like People have had it like behind their ear. They've had like uh, finger tattoos. They've... they've I've seen like tattoos pretty much in like any part of your body, like head, like legs, whatever. And there's always like such great pieces too. It's not just a symbol. Like people will get like these intricate pieces. And I was, just, I'm just like always shocked whenever I see it because I never expected that. Like when we created the band, I, I just did this for fun and I didn't know where it would turn. And then eventually I just like, I wanted to take it more seriously and, and it became what it is now. And, I think there's always room for, for progression and growth and hoping that it just continues to push and people start to like realize what victims is. So I love hearing that aspect and that story because when I first started interviewing, it was just for fun. I just wanted to meet the bands that I love without having to pay for a ticket, you know? So <laughs> the fact that uh, you, you were able to stick with it as well and it's becoming what it is, that is just, it, it's mind blowing in retrospect. It kind of feels like you've done a 180 from, from when you started, doesn't it in a way? <laughs> yeah, it's it's awesome. Very unexpected. When I was like, what, 16? I could not even like fathom what's happening I right was, now. I was the same age when I started my stuff. So that's oh, cool. wow. Oh, that's Crazy. awesome. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Well, the last thing I wanted to ask you about is obviously one way to numb the ache is through music. But what are some other ways that you happen to do it? What are just some hobbies that you like to have when you just want to decompress a little bit and take your mind elsewhere? Uh, I really like watching baseball, although <laughs> my team has been horrific lately. <laughs> Uh, I watch the I watch the Chicago Cubs, and obviously they're the one with the longest drought in history without winning. But I guess that kind of goes along with the bad luck crew because hey. just used to failure, used to losing. So when winning does come, it just feels like this uh, terrific feeling. Like I don't know, it's unexplainable. But I like sports. I watch. I just watched the the Bucks. I was rooting for them on the NBA championship. I know on the West Coast, people are probably rooting for the Suns. But uh, <laughs> I was happy that Giannis won. And then I also like to just go outside and bike ride, stuff like that. And then like play Warzone, Call of Duty sometimes. And awesome. just regular people stuff, I guess, <laughs> you know. But I'm enjoying my summer so far, at least. And uh, uh, my birthday's coming up in like three weeks, so. Uh. <laughs> and any plans for that? <laughs> uh, probably gonna get a margarita. <laughs> nice. And uh, probably just chill with some friends, we'll see. Nothing too crazy, but I'm turning 25 and it's like, damn, where does the time go anymore? I feel that. I definitely feel that. Well, I want to say thank you so much, Meredith, for taking the time for coming on today. It has been a delight being able to pick your brain a little bit. So we appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you guys. Uh, I know I've met you before and then I've met you. This is the first time meeting you. So it's really awesome just to be on the show again. And like, hopefully I'll come on for another time. We'll see. We'll see. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah we are so down for that we, we'd absolutely love victims but for everyone watching this has been meredith from victims be sure to check out and pick up numb the ache their latest record release and fingers crossed we'll be seeing you soon once again thank oh you. yeah I'm, sh- I'm sure i'm sure thank you again guys <laughs> bye bye